You're listening to the Northfield Podcast with Caleb Gordon with news and perspectives on culture from a biblical worldview. To find out more on Caleb, go to www.calebgordon.com. Once again, that's www.calebgordon.com. No, it's not live. We're just doing this podcast, just pre-recorded right now. It's the it's the podcast of the Northfield podcast. <laughs> Northfield podcast. Thanks for joining us. I got a bunch of people in here today. It's gonna be really interesting because there's really no topic. It's just something that we're. I'm gonna try out here and just have a discussion. Just know, just pretend like that's not here. Okay? Yeah. Pretend like it's not here. So, what you didn't see earlier is Jeremy, with his ninja skills, killed not one, not two, but three deadly wasps. With chopsticks. With, cho- <laughs> with chopsticks. <laughs> with, <clears throat> with chopsticks, he, he, he nailed them. So, here's my question for you guys. How's your week been? Better than Ryan's. Ryan's having a bad week. His knee's not feeling good at all. You want to have a wheelchair race later? Sure. <laughs> well, a wheelchair race evens the odds. <laughs> you you want to have a foot race? Well, I mean, no, I'm getting a wheelchair. And uh, you want to? We can get both wheelchairs. Competitive. Like a competitive thing. Okay. I can think of it. Dave, how's uh, how's your week been? Really well. I don't. Is it really been really uh-huh. well? We went and watched Dunkirk last night. What'd you think of that? It's good. Very good film. My father openly wept, like tears. <laughs> it's really funny because when it's, like you guys were talking to little girls, two minutes before I turned the microphone on, and then you got I turned the microphone on, and you guys turn into stone statues. I must be like that movie. I've made your dad wept openly three times. Where what? Your dad's cried in front of me three times. And you're, you must be that good. Because it takes... I've only seen him cry a handful of times. Ryan is Dunkirk. Ryan is Dunkirk? Oh, well, I could be it. So, Jeremy, how's your... Oh, do I want to be Dunkirk? That was a horrible event. Wasn't it? Yeah. Horrible event. Yeah. You make him cry. You have to be. Does that mean he's a horrible event altogether? Not a horrible event. Do we need to ask his wife? Oh. No? Okay. Yeah. We'll just bring our wives into this. Don't yeah. talk yeah. about wives? Okay, we'll just edit that out, right? No. So if you if you hear the fun excitement in the background, that's that's Momo. Momo's joined the podcast too. Somebody watch your child. <laughs> bring your children to podcast day. <laughs> so how's what uh how are things are going with you, Jared? Good. What's flying by? What what is what uh what's God been showing you guys lately? Your da- dad did a sermon about forgiveness, and I brought a question up to him the other day, one that made him cry when we were talking about it, we both wept. Uh, that trooper passed away. He was killed by his pretty much brother. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can, law enforcement Law enforcement can, brother, sure. Um, Daddy. Daddy. I, don't, I hope God gives that trooper's wife the ability to forgive. Yeah. That's, man, that, that would be, yeah, yeah. you're forgiving a man for killing your husband. Sure. Essentially. That's a rough one. I mean, and I think in those instances, God's going to give, because your dad talked about the tormentor, if she doesn't forgive. Yeah. Well, how long does she have to forgive? I mean, I can tell you right now, I couldn't forgive you killed Katie. I can forgive you right right now. Sure, well, I can. I can get. It. I mean, even if it's an accident, it's still. Yeah. It's still really hard. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of those things that you're. I mean, I mean, we've we've seen that in the last couple of years where people accidentally either shot somebody or 
ran somebody. I mean, we've seen these stories in the news in our community within the last year, even involving small children and you know, other yeah, the adults. Eight year old getting shot at. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, you know, that, that's a, that's a hard, <laughs> that's a really hard subject to, to deal with. But I think God in those moments, I mean, I, can, I can't say from experience because I've never been there or, or, or have, you know, stepped in those shoes. But I think that God would give grace to be able to forgive. It, maybe not immediately, but yeah. I think he would give grace to be able to forgive if, if, if you're walking that. I, I don't know. What do you think, Dave? I, I'm just asking you. I see you're pulling up your <clears throat> your app here to try to give me some answers. And you you got the slowest phone known to mankind. It's all those video games you download. I don't have any video games on Oh. Okay, yeah, I do. <laughs> you have to come in closer. Immediately, I repented. <laughs> you did repent because you straight lied to me. But, I mean, I think of 2 Corinthians where, where God talks about, or where Paul talks about, obviously it's God through Paul, but he talks about... Um, God giving the grace to walk through suffering and and things of that nature, but I, I think that could definitely be something that yeah, I don't know. We're, <laughs> it's it's hard. It's it's fun to, to sit here. We're actually literally, literally watching Momo. She's got. Now, 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 now. <laughs> She's got this phone, and I'm not sure what, what what does she have on it. Was it just her selfies that change your face into animals and stuff? Oh, so you had Snapchat up? Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. This is probably gonna be the best. This is probably the best and down most downloaded podcast of all time because we got here here to lighten the mood. All right, Dave. Back to finding forgive. God giving grace to forgive. Yeah. How does he do it? How? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> I mean, the Bible answer, the theologian in me says, Hebrews chapter, or Romans chapter 10, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm-hmm. So God's word has to be poured into your life. So you need to be actively engaged somehow in the Dad, word. Daddy. Yes. But what does the word say? What? Sorry. What is what? There, so that's what I need you. I need you next to the microphone. What does the word mic- say? I need you next to the microphone. That's okay. what that word. Um, what does the word say? You got it pulled up there. Why don't you fire away? I have a particular passage in mind in Matthew chapter 5 about going the extra mile. Okay. Um, it's a pregnant pause right there. Yeah. That's what that was. It was a pregnant pause to get you guys ready to hear what suspense is coming. Here it comes. All right. Here we go. You gotta add some inflection in your voice, man. I'm right. trying to help motivate you and get you excited. And it's straight bring your kids to podcast day. Look yeah, at this. it is. And there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> you have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, not to resist, not to resist an evil person. But whosoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue, uh, sue you. And take your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whosoever uh, compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Uh, give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Okay, what's your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, <laughs> wow, I love how you turned that table. That was awesome. Sorry. Um, I mean, Obviously, in the context, I mean, it, it, we've got about we're talking about lawsuits, and forget, but, ult, but the ultimate overarching thing there is forgiveness. Mm-hmm. To find forgiveness. So now let's let's look at it in this aspect. Say, let's say back in those days there was lots of people had slaves, right? Yeah. And um, say you're walking down the road and you're a slave, and somebody says, "Hey, I need you to carry this basket." I'm supposed to talk yeah, louder. Louder. With inflection. What's, add some inflection in there. Don't be boring. Hey. 
Why not? You're kind of monotone. <laughs> yeah, thank I you. Thank you, Ryan. Or thank you. I've been going through a de instructor <sighs> development class all week, so oh, you need so to don't, change your Don't have volume. monotone voice. Like, get some inflection. Okay. Talk like you're on the radio. So I really lost my place on what I was talking about. Okay. Um, seriously, I've been doing that with my Sorry. <laughs> Euler. <coughs> Euler. I'm trying to lose my or get my thoughts back here. Yeah, Where was I? Back in those no, it's great. Yeah. I love this. This is this is going on this is going down. So if you're asked to go a mile and you only take it a mile and you're a slave, okay. right? What are your what do you think that you would feel towards that person? If I'm a slave, there may be some animosity. Mm-hmm. Some anger, maybe mm -hmm. some bitterness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, say that you're asked to go one mile, but instead you decide to go two miles just out of your own will, your own desire. My own desire, okay. You eliminate, by the through that process, you eliminate all resent towards towards that person because you're going an extra mile. Always give extra to somebody or to... Yeah. What am I trying to say here? You want to step out farther than... go farther than, than you are originally asked to go? Yes, absolutely. Because okay. if, you, if you don't, it could spur a root of bitterness... Root of bitterness. ...towards somebody. Sure. So, so there is a potential... So it's easier to forgive if you go with the extra mile. Okay. So does that I, make any sense? It do, um, yeah, I could go with that. But my question is: So Ryan's instance here, where he's talking about this this trooper being killed, and the wife of the trooper that died, mm -hmm. forgiving that guy that that did it, oh, because it wasn't on purpose. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to hurt? What's what's the best way of somebody to walk in forgiveness in that in a scenario like that? Or if it's not even really something that that it's that big, maybe it's just something small where like maybe Ryan's offended me or Jeremy's offended you, and you need to walk in forgiveness. I'm like I had like I've had experiences with with this kind of stuff in the last just couple of weeks where you ever just had somebody use one like like there's been a moment where I wanted to punch somebody. Anybody else in the room? Mm -mm. You don't want to kill no, you're not the only one. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. Had moments where you just wanted to deck somebody, but you had to like you had to reevaluate your whole position on that. And forgiving people that are just that just creep you out and just annoy the snot out of you. How, how does that How does that work? I feel like that's where a relationship with Christ comes in, is because David knows better than anyone. I was. I held crazy grudges. I, I just I couldn't. If you, if you ever wronged me, like I just I couldn't I could never let that go. Ten years later, now twenty years later, I look back and I think, and it's because not because I've changed my personality. I don't think, or it's just because I have a relationship with Christ and I know what His Word says, and I know that holding on to that bitterness causes me a lot more turmoil in my home, in my relationships with my family, in my relationship with Christ. So not only am I doing it for God, but I am I feel like you have to do it for yourself because I don't know if it will set you free, but it will release a burden, kind of, if that's a... Boom! Truth bombs being dropped Pretty by much. Jeremy Dunkel tonight. Where's the mic? He needs to be dropped. Oh, yeah. sorry. He just dropped it. Boom. Okay, that was that was that was good. That was good. Don't ask for anything else. Woo! <laughs> just brought the noise tonight, son. Don't tell me you ever, don't ever tell me. I don't have anything good to bring. Well, you, you just have to bring it into a personal space to me, and that is very personal. Like I, I feel like if there's anyone that can deal with bitterness and I don't know. Resentment. I would, yeah. yeah. And, I mean. Hey, so, so you're saying a, a genuine relationship with Christ mm -hmm. brings that about? Yeah, absolutely. Because you you've seen you've seen what he did, who he forgave, what they did to him, and then I think, well, wait a second. 
here this guy is that whatever five years ago did something who knows what it might have been and i'm still holding on to this yeah you know and i mean mm. it's just does, does that make sense yeah it affects your home life i mean it affects the people that you love too you're holding in anger that's what you're holding in and it causes an undue stress in your life it does um We've been going through our, the class I've been going through this week. Um, we've been talking a lot about stress and the effects and how I my life is not Game Warden Ryan Walker. My life is my family and God. This job comes way down the line. Sure. And if you put that job first, that stress is going to... We got up and introduced ourselves. Out of 16 cops, law enforcement officers, two of us are in our original marriages. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. One has been many, married. Okay, so how many were they in? 16. 16 cops, and only two of you are in the original marriages? Yep. Holy smokes. Most of them are on their second that marriage. There's one man in there that's on his fifth. Dad, what wow. are you doing? Fifth marriage. What are you doing? So, and when our instructor was talking about that, that's what what he 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 he's a christian man and he's on his second wife but what he realized in his first 22 years of his career that's what his life was was his Revolved career around his career and that's how he lost his wife yeah because she's not going to take the stress that you bring in from work home and all that so man that's mm. yeah it, I was, and I, I was telling somebody today, if you're not willing to forgive somebody and you allow them to control you by the way what they've done, or they, you allow them to control you, you're the one who loses. Like you're you're a prisoner in their prison, yeah, and most of the time, most of the time they don't even care or they're not even thinking about it. Right. But you're constantly thinking because you've held on to it for so long, you've held on to the grudge, you've held on to the anger for so long. You're just like you know. I don't, you just it's constantly there but they're not even aware of it and they, they most of the time don't even really care yeah, that's a good point and so you're a prisoner inside of their that's prison not. that you've constructed they don't even construct the prison you're the one who constructs the prison that's and you stay in the prison on your own you, you could break out of that prison any moment but because that's you're so prideful that's so not not consumed that. with the anger you don't get out not. so oh, that's great did you have something you're, you're, you're scrolling through looking? Just for man, that's great. That's good. Man, I'm glad you came tonight, man. That's good. Golly, that's good. And when you, let me say this, when you forgive someone that you've held a grudge against for a couple years or however long it might have been, 10 years, I did it the other day. A guy was driving through Okisa, mm -hmm. and a guy I know, was sitting under a shade tree in Okeese, Oklahoma. He was a bicyclist. He was my ex-wife's father. And he had done and said some horrible things about me. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to turn around. I'm going to go back. I'm going to talk to him. In Okeese, Oklahoma, I talked to my ex-father-in-law underneath a hackberry tree for a half hour. Wow. And we ended it with a hug. And we went on our way. I mean, it was. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, when I was driving home, like I just felt like there was this weight lifted off my chest. And it wasn't something I thought about every day, but when I did think about it, it ruined that hour or whatever. You know, whatever it might have been. Yeah. So. Well, cool. Um, well, I'm gonna. We're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna end this up, and then we'll. Uh, it's good. I mean, good thoughts. Good. Good. Good things out of. I mean, I think good things came out of this today, and. Uh, my my hope is that uh, that we're encouraged you know, after we've heard these things because I mean this dealing with anger and dealing with unforgiveness is probably one of the biggest things that we as guys deal with. I mean not just guys, I mean guys and girls both. We deal with a lot of anger. We deal with a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness. And man, you guys have brought some great information tonight. So I just that's super great. Um, David, would you lead us in prayer and we'll end out of this? First time, Father, thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for all this here this evening, Father. Lord, I pray that you would 
Help us to be mindful of your word, Father. Help us to recognize our sin and to recognize once we need to forgive and forget, Father, like you do with us, Father. Lord, I ask that you would protect us and guide us throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, love you guys. Go get them. Yeah.